tape because all the sheriff's department calls it tape. It doesn't bother me. They, <laughs> oh, uh -huh. okay. you always figure they know everything anyway. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Ted. How are you doing? Well, I'm hanging in there. I uh, I just got the bug last week and uh, wanted to, just wanted to chat with you briefly because we uh, usually have been away for a long time. Yeah, right. And. Uh, Right. How are things going for you over there? Uh, well, quite well, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> I was just talking to someone the other day, and and uh, it's, uh, the experience of coming over here is one of those, uh, you know, those good things, bad things. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, if I hadn't come over here, I probably wouldn't be looking at a new trial in the Carol Durange case. Yeah. And uh, the whole bunch of, the whole number of things have opened up, and I suppose that, uh, you know, if I have to spend the, uh, several years behind bars, it might as well spend a little here, a little there. You know? <laughs> kind of, get a little variety, huh? Right, right. Yeah. They treat you pretty good? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, sure they are. It's, uh -huh. uh, they, That's good. They have a, they've, they've developed this uh, paranoia about me. Uh, they have this uh, unrealistic fear that I'm going to escape or so. <laughs> I can't imagine where they're getting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Oh, I just I just wanted to call you up. It, uh, well, you know, mainly just a lot of a lot of things have been happening. You know, uh, uh, the escape adventure, which caused a, a great furor of activity around here, and mm -hmm. I guess some publicity over there. And yeah. now we're uh, you know, looking at what looks like a ninety five percent chance of a new trial in the Carol Durant case. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and while this case over here gets curiouser and curiouser because uh, they've added a couple of additional Utah transactions, alleged transactions, in their attempt to gain a conviction in the Colorado case. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, uh, uh, I've been so overwhelmed by work recently that, uh, uh, hmm. you know, there's just a lot to do. But, I, you know, way back when, when I was... Oh, I guess it was back in April when I decided to represent myself in this case. I could just, I, <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, I can hear Al think, yeah, yeah, I knew we'd try to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I knew you would. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I remember one time you come in, I can't remember whether something I read in your report. I think it may have been something I read in one of your reports, quite frankly. Um, that, you know, you, that, that I can't delegate responsibility or something to that effect. I don't know. If, I don't think it's exactly the way you put it, but... Uh, yeah, I can't remember. But some, something more or less that I like to, you know, do things myself and uh, have a hard time and trusting things to others. I, I can't remember yeah, how you... Yeah, high think. achievement. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, anyway, I was just... Uh, uh -huh. Well, I was just wondering, you know, I know you're you're really at arm's length on, on this thing, and, uh, uh, you know, we haven't really... <clears throat> You know, taught personally, obviously, since the latter part of January. Yeah, right. But any impressions about all that you've been hearing about uh, me and and uh, and. Uh, okay, how do you mean? Well, like the escape and everything. I mean, I'm, uh, I wonder what your impression of that was. Uh, oh. Just again, just from a party who knows me, but who, who didn't have an opportunity to speak to me either mm -hmm. just before or after that happened. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is something. It'd be fun to sit down and chat with you about an hour. Yeah. yeah. Really. And uh, uh, I had mixed impressions. I was wondering if you were really getting uptight, mm -hmm. and the pressure looked like it was on. You mm -hmm. know, and I was wondering if it was uh, getting look like in your mind that you were going to be convicted. So mm -hmm. when the opportunity was there, and you just took it, mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. You know, I'd like to have been able to sit down with you before and after to see, <laughs> you know. Well, after anyway. <laughs> right, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, just to see what was happening. Yeah, what, uh, you know, in, in your own mind, what was, what was happening? What well, was the reason for it? You know, I'd... Uh, given it a great deal of thought. You know, I, I've been moved from Aspen, been in the, the Aspen, the Pitkin County Jail, which is in Aspen, from January 31st until April the 11th, which is 73 days. I have all this memorized, you know. Uh -huh. And in, in Aspen, I was at all, I, I was an open affair. The, the, the jail is very small, small it does. See, it's uh, three, four, five, six, seven cells, and, and uh, 
uh, you know, and, and all the doors are open all the time. The place had been built in 1887. But it was just, you know, here is where I could come out and we could relate to talk to other prisoners, go in their cell. You know, something like at the state prison, not like Mac in the main line. Mm-hmm. And then they moved me down here. This is prior to the escape. Uh, because I was a security risk, and uh, they put me in a 6 by 12 by 8 foot high cell and ordered no one to speak to me. And uh, quite frankly, that's when I decided to represent myself. Oh, <laughs> At least okay. I got to, you know, get out to go to the library, you know. Yeah. One of these situations where, uh, you know, concrete, uh, solid steel door with a little window and the food slot. I mean, it's, it was, this was worse than the hole, honestly, Al. This was worse than the hole. Yeah. In Max, because there you can at least talk to people and see people. Uh-huh. And it's worse than Max because they never let, they had exercise except for the six days uh, I was out on escape since the uh, 11th of April. Uh-huh. So uh, this was building up and building up and building up. And uh, I had, over the months, I had noticed a number of opportunities to just walk right out. Walk right out, right, right out. But I didn't know quite how to put it all together. I was, as you say, I was very concerned about what people would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't, you know, people say, weren't, weren't you afraid people, that someone would shoot you or something? So no, the last, it was, it was one of the lo- lower fears in my, uh, in higher fears. Yeah. But, I don't know, that day I came there and I thought a great deal about escape and I didn't know if I had the guts to do it, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. And the guard went outside for a smoke and there's not a one person in the whole courtroom. You'd, you'll have, you'd have to see the, the, the courthouse in, in Aspen and there's, the windows were open and the fresh air was blowing through and the, the, the sky was blue. And I said, I'm ready to go. And I walked to the window and jumped out. <laughs> yeah. And I started chugging. And uh, I had no plan. I had nobody helping me. I had no money. I had no nothing. Yeah. And uh, just ran right in the, up into the mountains. Huh. But anyway, you know, when I when I was captured, recaptured, they brought me back in. And they, you know, I, I spoke very freely about my adventures during those six days because you know, something I really couldn't deny. But some, one of the investigators, Bill Workies, came into the room after I'd been there for some time and said, uh, well, uh, would, you, would you like to talk about the, the Campbell case? Would you like to tell me all about it now, Ted? You know, more or less what you want to confess and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I could see the twinkle in his eyes that, uh, you know, he thought that I that I panicked and now the jig was up and I was ready to, to bust open. And I told him, I said, Mike, listen, uh, I jumped out of the window because I want to be free. Uh, I, you know, I, I, two years ago I could have walked out of a courthouse and, uh, you know, no one would have charged me with any crime. No one would even have noticed. I, you know, as far as I was concerned, I was just what belonged to me. And mm-hmm. it wasn't a fear of conviction. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, because I, I believe then that I, I believe more firmly now and I will be acquitted and <laughs> and not only that but I'll get a new trial in Durant the, iron, the irony of it all Al is that the, probably the only offense that they that they will ever a, a solid conviction on me will be the escape <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but uh, you know, I told him uh, on an honest to God I, I, I just got sick and tired of being locked up and I thought you know because way back then I knew that I had this new evidence on, on Durant although I hadn't given it to anybody yet wondering what to do with it and I knew that the case for me here was good that the, the case they had was weak but I kept saying to myself Ted if you if in the event that you're quitted here in Colorado and uh, you go back to Utah and let's say you get a new trial in Durant which I estimate would take three years because even if we win at the, the trial court level with a new trial they'll, the state will appeal and if the Supreme Court overturns we'll have to go to the federal court and Federal courts take years and years. And yeah. even if I got a new trial in Durant three years from, uh, you know, there's a chance I could be convicted just basically on the publicity of the whole thing. I mean, I'm pretty notorious. And uh, you know, if I was acquitted uh, three, four years from now in Durant's case, what would I have left? I, you know, maybe unrealistically, but I asked myself, could you go to law school? Could you live? Could you... You know, look, would your friends be able to look you in the eye? Could you be Ted Bundy again? And I figured, you know, whether you're free tomorrow or whether you're free four years from now, you're still going to have to make an entirely new life and really hide from your old life, whether yeah. you legitimately or illegitimately. Yeah. So, so that was that. Was, those are the priorities then. And uh, mm-hmm. I wasn't up against the wall. I mean, it was something I could have done then, uh, something I could have waited 
to do. Uh, but it was just, I, I honestly just fed, you know, r way up above my above my chin with being uh, with being locked up. Right. Yeah, just one of those things. Yeah. But uh, I just still there's still the, the, the scars and the blisters on my feet. I'm sitting here barefoot. <laughs> uh -huh. From running around in the mountains, an extraordinary experience because I, I had thought that I was—I mean, a pretty strong-willed person. But you know, believe it or not, it was the body that was strong, but the mind that was weak. That the morning after, well, I, I ran up—you know, like four thousand feet of, of, of very steep hill. It was actually Aspen for the other side, and they didn't know where in the world I was, and I was feeling really good that that evening and I started hiking up and if I kept on hiking I would have been long gone but a very cold sleet and, and rainstorm hit me and I, I got very cold and then the, I went into a state of shock and I managed to find a cabin and the cabin was just you know there was no way to get into it and here I was shivering and hungry and cold and it was raining and blowing and early the next morning like seven o'clock in the morning and I was just sitting there seriously considering giving myself up and it was just a a complete mind blow for me. Yeah. Just longed for freedom for so long, and now, like, like I was living my ultimate dream. All of a sudden, I was willing to, to throw it away because I was cold and hungry. And I said, "My Lord." Um, mm. But I got in the cabin and recuperated, believe it or not, and got and I had a second chance at it. And then I made the wrong turn, and uh, then I hurt my knee and three, four days of, of high altitude and cold got to me, and again, I, my mind got weak. And it really kind of, again, uh, when I was recaptured, I just stood there. I mean, I was just, that night, I went, when I walked back into Aspen. No one knew me. People saw me. No one could recognize me. But my, I just was totally disoriented. It was like an experience I've never known before. I, I just laid down like a, an animal ready to die. I mean, just, hmm. uh, it was just an incredible experience. And I, uh, hmm. I, I was disoriented and, and, you know, quite frankly, I hopped in a car and just drove. I knew I'd get caught. I mm -hmm. mean, I didn't want to get caught, but I knew it would happen, but I was just so tired and... And, uh, and the best of the see. alternatives. Yeah, and I just said, well, let's just see what happens. And uh, a fluke, actually, they stopped me. But, uh, you know, anyway, that was one of the more profound experiences of the... Uh, yeah, sounds like it. Of being over here yeah. certainly did cause a cure. Uh, mm hmm And uh, you're uh, spending most of your afternoons in the law library, aren't you? Oh yeah, I spend. I go up there every day for three hours. Of, huh. And uh, imagine you're really learning law. Oh goodness sakes! Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, pretty darn good at this whole uh, process. Uh, you know, I won a couple fairly significant victories on Friday, uh, as they go last Friday in court. And I suppose that I'm, uh, I've learned that, I, I've learned what the pitfalls of being one, of representing one, oneself are, and so I'm, I'm going to avoid those. But for the time being, I am doing a great, I am doing the work uh -huh. in the case, uh, and the, re the research, and, uh, yeah. I think we're pretty successful at, you know, considering the the kinds of resources that are amassed against me and the, and the uh, you know, the the, the uh, various law enforcement agencies and prosecutors who are working on this case. Uh, I think I'm more than holding my own. I think I'm giving them fits, quite frankly. And and I don't. It's not just me. I mean, I'm not here. I'm not. Uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not some genius or anything, I think, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, such a, a rather uh, decrepit case that they're really having a, a hard time uh, you know, putting it together, uh -huh. to say the least. I don't know if, you know, they had, the, they had, quote, an eyewitness, somebody had seen me at some place, which... Uh, you know, fit into their theory of things. And at the preliminary hearing, she looked at me and she looked in the courtroom and picked an undersheriff as the person she had seen. So their case kind of collapsed at that oh, point. Yeah. Um, uh, but right now they're, you know, they're hanging in there. I give them credit for me. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So, uh, how are things over there? I, you know, I've, I've always wondered about you and, my, and a lot of my friends there and everything. Mm -hmm. I heard there was a, a killing uh, not too long ago. Yeah. 